Hey, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. We're diving into the AFC West. We're talking about Patty Mahomes and the whole division. Does anybody else stand a chance? What's going to happen with Damian Williams and company? Stay tuned for a great episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Hey, Foot Clan, you enjoy this show? You ready to rock this season out yeah. in fantasy football? Become part of the Foot Clan at jointhefoot.com. That's where our community gathers. That's where you have access to all of our premium resources, our in-season tools, and, of course, Foot Clan Leagues. The Foot Clan Leagues, you can find other people in your area or online. And if you're in the Join the Foot, if you're an official Foot Clan member, you will be able to get in this year's Megalobar. So check it out. Go to jointhefoot.com. Hi, this is Josh from Louisville, Kentucky, representing the International Seven Time Zones Dynasty League, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Brand new show. A brand new day, Mike. A brand new day. I thought you were going to go, brand new show, brand new clothes, because you're, uh, you're a little fashionista. 16-0. and 0, The Cardinals are going 16-0. and 0. <laughs> I've got an Arizona Cardinals shirt on today. So I'm very excited. Vintage. It is vintage. So yeah. Vintage. Yeah. I got some Cardinals kicks on too. That's the type of Cardinal that does not <laughs> right. exist in Arizona. That is a St. Louis Cardinals shirt on top of a football. Uh, it, you guys don't know this. I mean, they used to be the Chicago Cardinals. This is a Chicago Cardinals shirt. I did know that. So you tried to outsmart me with a different wrong answer. Uh, no, I was not talking about football. He oh, was talking about it's the baseball low. Thus me logo. specifying that he's on a Football. Here's a here's a couple things to get into. We got AFC West divisional breakdown on the show today. A good quick question. Some mailbag. We just got back from San Francisco. We made it out. Oh my gosh, we made it out alive. The show was rowdy. The people over there have a lot of things to say, but thank you for coming out. Uh, we went over after the show, oh. and we. Yeah. Would you play some shuffleboard? There was some Whew. unfortunate fans who thought they were good at shuffleboard, but they teach them a lesson. But we had to crush them. You smoke them. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Wait, look, they started with a 5-1 lead, and they, said, and they said, jump in here, guys. We're like, all right. Well, you went all – Yeah, and then they it, got destroyed. They went all Falcons? Yes. Oh. Um, I'm not sure at the beginning of the show if anybody actually understood the words you were kind of screaming, but that you were talking about the Megalobowl. Yes. The, the, the Megalobowl. So this is the uh, – why don't you explain that for two seconds just to Sure, it's coming later. You can't out. get in it yet, but it is coming, and the Megalobowl is going to be – a giant, massive tournament with every Foot Clan member that wants to join up into that league, into that league. Whoever wins, automatic entry into the Listener League the next year. It's coming. It was, it was a crazy just, time last year. Yeah, the the Listener League, we'll, we'll talk about that too in coming weeks. I mean, August is almost here. Oh, We're going to get through these divisional breakdowns. I'm excited. What, that's, did it sneak up on that you? That snuck up on me quick. Uh, August is almost here. I know. The Listener League's going to get going. Wow. August moves very silent. Yes. Very stealth the mover. The sneakiest of months. <laughs> um, here's your quick question today. If you were a betting man, <laughs> as Brooks posed is the question. <laughs> Actually, I give credit to Kyle. Oh. Okay. Oh. Jumped in what on What current one. Vegas odds stand out to you the most and why? We have the Super Bowl... Uh, odds that have been released coming out of Vegas, for example, the Chiefs at six to one. You got the Rams, the Patriots, and the Saints at eight to one. Um, obviously, you've got Miami sitting there at three hundred to one. Woo! That's uh, that's how you win big. My sixteen and zero Arizona Cardinals are sitting at a hundred to one. Yeah, but is there is there one specific line that I don't know you want in on? It, for me, there were there were two that jumped out. I'll go with the Philadelphia Eagles at twenty to one. Uh, if I had to pick two teams to represent their respective conferences, it would be Philly and the Colts. So I I like their odds. Yeah, the uh, the Colts were were my pick. They've been my. And where are they at? Uh, right now, they're the same. The, the, As the Eagles. Yeah, the, I mean the Colts are in Indianapolis, Andy. Uh, but the. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a mic joke for you. Uh, yeah, they're twenty to one right now. Oh, uh, it was hilarious. You, I looked over. <laughs> it is confused. Your face was so happy. So that's uh, that's appropriate. So look, I I, I like the Colts as just trying to as be nice. My man. like current who who's my pick to win the right. Super Bowl? It's currently the Colts. And you know, look, twenty to one odds. I like it. If you want a dark horse, if you want like the longest odds that I think does have a shot. I would throw the Carolina Panthers out there at sixty to one. At sixty, oh, to that's one. not bad. That's not bad. The, the couple teams where I liked it, where it was Cleveland at twenty to one. By the way, oh, they've got to be freaking out just about the odds. They don't even need to play the season. Yeah, they're twenty just, to one. That's, that's beautiful. Look, I like I like the Browns a lot. I think they're going to be better, but that's just that's Vegas stealing people's money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, so I went with a couple mid mid tier options where I believe they could actually. Re improve? What is like a that's bounce not, back? No, start over. Well, that's bounce what, back. A, a bounce back. Yeah. I was trying to find a, a more Re eloquent. Improve. I knew that was not that's right. Jason esque. Mm -hmm. But did you know what I meant? I knew exactly what you meant. Thank you. A nice post uh, hype, hype sleeper. <laughs> uh, at both sitting at 40 to 1, the Atlanta Falcons and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay. Who both, could, I think, could be great again. And 40 to 1, that, that's a good line. That's how you win big. It falls, taking them to the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, Bortles almost did it. I would say their defense, taking them to the Super Bowl. Atlanta, we've talked about their kind of – they have this nice schedule when it pertains to dome games, warm weather games, every single game on the season. It's, it's where Matt Ryan plays – I call those room temperature his games. His best. Yes, room temperature. It's room temperature in here right now. A little no, it's not. A little stagnant, actually. We live actually. in Arizona. But they do have a tough schedule. That's a tough division. I love Atlanta as a pick, as a dark horse pick for sure. It's going to be interesting to see who emerges. Somebody has to finish last in that division. I think Bruce Arians is going to have to accept his <laughs> Oh, spot. no, not Bruce. Uh, you can find this show on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers on Instagram, Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's the fantasy footballers.com. We also appreciate everybody who is subscribing. Get on board. Five shows a week starting August 1st. It's going to be fun. A brand new season. I was encouraged hearing that there have been at least three small itty bitty baby meetings between the NFL and the NFLPA. Yes, because I would like football to continue indefinitely. Because it's my job. <laughs> All right, let's get into uh, let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Well, Mel Melvin Gordon came out last week and said, hey, it's a trend set. hey, I'm not showing up without some money. Well, Zeke, it's being reported by Pro Football Talk that Zeke has privately said he will hold out of training camp unless he gets a new contract. I Do you believe that this is as concerning as the Gordon news? I am not afraid of Gordon not playing. I know, Jason, you are very afraid of that. Zeke has an extra year on he the contract. He still has two years left. Seems like maybe a flex and just miss training camp, show up and do his thing. Yeah, the hard part for Zeke is like when guys go with this threat and they do miss time, the fines that they accrue, those end up getting kind of just wink, wink, we'll, we'll take them out, here's your new contract. But if he pulls this kind of a stunt and then there's no actual new contract, the team has the right then to, depending on how much time he misses, that he could get a huge fine. So I've, I don't think that he's going to miss much of training camp, if if any. Yeah, because he's still two years away. Uh, he's in the fourth year. He'll get a fifth year option, and then uh, that's when he would, you know, really have to have a new contract. I, I feel like this is one of those flexes where, uh, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss some. So that you know, I want a new contract. Then I'll be back. I'll be fine. I'm not really worried about the Zeke situation when it comes to missing games. No, not for this year. But this can be one of those kind of inflection or the spark of a problem happens now. I remember this in Arizona with Anquan Bolden's contract situation. Even if this year they don't give him a contract, he comes back and plays. It's only going to be worse for the Cowboys next off season because he'll be in the same situation Gordon is in going into that fifth year. Just something to keep your eyes on. Darius Geis suffered a hamstring injury while rehabbing. Mm -mm. Now, when this news broke originally, it mm -mm. seemed like a fresh injury. The news 
came out after that that Geis' injury happened a few weeks ago. It, you know, Geis downplayed the injury, said there's no reason for concern. He's a liar. There's always reason for concern when you have re-injury during the recovery from a major surgery in which you had a setback and a follow-up surgery. This is not Darius Geis' year. And that's what the hamstring injury. Guys coming back from the ACL tear, they are very susceptible to getting that hamstring injury. And these, this is no good, man. This is what we were talking about, Geis, and his value just a couple shows ago where it's he's kind of trending down in the middle of the rounds. Maybe I'll take a shot on it. But if, we're, if we are talking about Geis' recovering from hamstring in, issues – in training camp, then just n no thanks, and I I will take my shot. I'll grab Adrian Peterson late. So it does it. Does it affect your perception, Jason, on Peterson as a, a late round? It it makes me feel more confident in taking Peterson as a late round guy that will start the year with a good workload. I I don't think. Look, they call him Darius Glass. Oh, it's, it's, they do. Well, I I've seen that. You I've apparently seen do that on Twitter. Look, he is having some health problems. Uh, I wouldn't come in and just be like, okay, he's the lead dog now. He's going to run the show. Like, I don't think that's I don't think that's wise. So I I do like Adrian Peterson as a late round flyer to start your season off strong. The NFL is suspended officially. Chris Herndon, Jets tight end, for the first four games of the season yep. due to his substance abuse policy violation. Pled guilty back in 2018 to a DUI. He is appealing. Uh, that's the word on the street. So he's appealing. He is appealing because usually there's a two game suspension, and because there was another person at risk, they made it four. So it is possible that this gets reduced. But I mean, either but either way, it's him. irrelevant. You cannot draft Chris Herndon because you're not drafting a maybe takes a step up tight right. end who's not playing for sure. Ronald Jones. It's reported he is up to 221 pounds after playing at 208. When we were talking about Ronald Jones in the draft season last uh, uh, last year, the big problem was weight. You just don't have efficient, effective workload guys at 200, 205, the Reggie Bush category of, of, of size. He's at 221. He says he put on a lot of pounds of muscle. Sounds, sounds like something you would say. Uh, 2018 second round pick has a great opportunity this year. Peyton Barber may be the guy, but he's not a special running back. This so whole, you have an opportunity. This whole news segment is just me shaking my head. This is all it's all bad news right now. We need some positivity, but I, you, you're you're taking you Ronald Jones putting yes. up 13 pounds. Yes, running when you backs, called him underweight all off season as bad news. I did not. I wasn't going after his weight when I was attacking him. I was going after he can't do certain things. Well, now, maybe you're thinking, okay, he adds weight and he can pass protect better, but pass protecting is not just size. I mean, you, we've seen Jacquez Rogers, who is not a large guy. He's been an excellent pass protector. It's a, it's a technique and a mentality that Ronald Jones just doesn't have. I hate when running backs put on weight. They, it doesn't pay off in, in the, the way that I look at it and in, in all of my research, running backs adding weight, you think it's, it sounds awesome, but Ronald Jones' calling card was speed. It was agility. And now he's 13 pounds heavier? I mean, that's a lot of extra weight. And we had some friends who were at the, the sports con event this past weekend saying, yes, he's put on weight. He doesn't look like he's in putting adding football weight. He looks... He doesn't look like he's in football shape. He is looking a little couch potato-y. So... <laughs> Like I cannot neither confirm or deny. I have I just, also put on thirteen <laughs> pounds of muscle recently. I think couch potato we weight is the worst descriptor you could ever have for weight. <laughs> like that is just humiliating levels of weight. Like that's but, a new category. But no, this this is not good. To well, me. put on some roly poly weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I do want to bring this up because uh, you know the listeners they probably want to hear us weigh in a little bit about a rumored eighteen game schedule. Do you want to talk about it for a second? Do we have time for that? I, mean, I, I just want to call it stupid. That's yeah. It. I mean, the 18-game the schedule, I'm fine with that, but the proposal is that there's a 16-game cap on how many games a player can play in the regular season according to the NFL's proposal. That is the NFL's preposterous proposal. That makes no sense. That means 
Oh, that means 12% of the games out there, you're going to have a backup quarterback playing. That, 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 that changes competition. That changes ticket buying, fandom, everything. I mean, look, you're gonna, if you're in it's fantasy, so you're stupid. definitely going to have a lot more to track and to keep your eyes on when it comes to matchups and I don't think it's going to start. Sits. No. I, I can't imagine it happens either. So All right, that's it for today's news and notes with fantasy football gearing up. Now's the time to ask your commission if you're using the correct, the right, the most flexible platform. They should use Sleeper. Mm. Check out the Sleeper app. Download it today. All right, we've got a lot to talk about. Let's get started. Let's get divisional. All right, we are traveling to the AFC West today on the show. We're going to break down everything that has gone on with the Chiefs, Chargers, Broncos, and Raiders. Talk about our expectations for these teams. Hopefully uh, illuminate, hopefully bring to mind some things that will help your fantasy drafts. Talk about expectations. We're going to start with the 12-4 and four Chiefs, who just barely... Won the division over the Chargers last year. Both teams at twelve and four. Uh, the big story around the Chiefs this off season. There's been several for fantasy purposes. Yes, uh, they've been Damian Williams. Will he be the guy? Will he? Is he capable of being a productive NFL and fantasy running back? Obviously, all the you know the legal situation with Tyreek Hill. Will Patrick Mahomes have his favorite weapon on the field? to continue what he did last year. I mean, Patrick Mahomes was uh, un unconscious all year long. I mean, four touchdowns, four touchdowns, four touchdowns, six touchdowns. He single-handedly won leagues. So will the cold-blooded Sammy Watkins be able to stay <laughs> healthy this season and step up for fantasy, perhaps in the absence of Tyreek Hill? A lot of questions. I agree. You, I saw you retweeted a little bit more of the wisdom – Look, of the Watkins. I had not been following Sammy Watkins' Twitter account, and that was a mistake. I immediately started following. If you want <laughs> Jack Handy level inspiration, <laughs> <laughs> follow Sammy Watkins' Twitter account. It's fantastic. Um, let me let me ask you this question at the top. And this was a, an offense that was obviously incredible last year, ranked uh, third in passing yards per game. First in points per game at 35 points per game. You know, you have the best tight end in football with Travis Kelsey. You had arguably the best wide receiver in football with Tyreek Hill last year. This year they go out and they spend a second-round draft pick on Mecole Hardman. They spend a sixth-round draft pick on Darwin Thompson running back, and they bring in Carlos Hyde because Kareem Hunt is gone. Spencer Ware, gone. Chris Conley, gone. So... Let me start at the top, though. Expectations for Patrick Mahomes. How much do they take a hit? Like, regardless of whether you would take Patrick Mahomes high in fantasy drafts, which I know we are not spending up on Mahomes. Right. The likelihood that he doesn't throw 50 touchdown passes is very, very high. high. Even with a full kind of allotment of weapons, that, like, that kind of a season doesn't just happen over and over and over again, at least hasn't historically. Could. I mean, it's a brand new season. It could happen, but it's low odds. How much does not having Tyreek Hill for four or six games affect where you think that production ends up for Patrick Mahomes? Or do you think he just kind of pivots and figures it out and it's Demarcus Robinson and Hardman and those other players that, that take up the, the mantle? I think he can figure it out, but it's it's still going to be a, a negative hit to him. And just to put some historical connotation in there, Andy, three times in the history of the NFL – only three times has a quarterback thrown 50 or more touchdowns. Now, that was a season where Patrick Mahomes would be worth the early pick because he's providing you such an edge at the quarterback position. He's outscoring everybody. So, yes, he's worth an early round, but he's going to regress. And if you say, well, you know, he's going to throw 40. Only 13 times in the history of the NFL has a quarterback thrown 40 or more touchdowns. So that is also – improbable I mean maybe Mahomes is different maybe he's that different and we're already witnessing a Hall of Fame career but call me insane but I'm going to look at the analytics and the, and the probability of him throwing 40 or more touchdowns it's just 
not high. When when especially when you over succeed the way that he did and losing Tyreek, maybe me Cole, the second round pick, me Cole Hartman can fill in for a while, but he's still a rookie, so I'm not expecting that to be incredible productions. I'm I'm out on Mahomes at his current draft cost. It, but I mean, he said all that. He still is the number one quarterback for me. So if he's somehow falling because you play in a league where everyone's saying, I'm not touching a quarterback till the 10th round, in that fifth or sixth round, sure, then I'll take a look at it's funny, Patrick two, Mahomes. Two of, two of his first three games are really, really tough, Jacksonville and Baltimore. And you right. assume that those first few games are where he's not going to have Tyreek Hill. So the people that are grabbing he actually Mahomes. threw zero touchdowns against Jacksonville in the, in his game in Jacksonville last year. Right, so grabbing Mahomes early at the sacrifice of your running back or your wide receiver pick and then getting off to perhaps a slower Mahomes start, even if he finishes the year as the number one, you're, you're going to be hurting your fantasy roster. Yeah, I, I still think the odds are that, I mean, we have him ranked that way, that'll finish number one at the position. He's still an engine by which all of the pieces around him uh, exist with great fantasy joy. You know, whether it's yes. whether it's looking at Kelsey and what he, he is for the offense or looking at Damian Williams, who all signs are pointing to a heavy workload for Damian Williams. There hasn't been any indication that, you know, if he doesn't do it on the field, maybe there'll be changes, but he should have every, every opportunity. And it's not like a running back getting an opportunity on a middling offense. It means something different when you're in Kansas City. If you get the opportunity in Kansas City, it means that you're a top 10 running back. I went back and I watched Damian Williams and looked at some of him in Kansas City, and the reality is the same as what I thought then. I don't think he did anything special very often, but the way that they just get the guy open in space, he is a decent pass-catching back who is fast. And those two qualities, when you get them in space and have a really good design by Andy Reid, I think Damian Williams is going to succeed in this offense. If he's been given the green light to be the guy, I think you want the guy. I mean, you, you want the number one running back on the best offense. Kansas City running backs had 12 receiving touchdowns last year. Yeah, that number is, will come down. That is as many as 11 NFL teams combined. That's part of why Mahomes' touchdown total was so high is that even the, the, the rushing production or you know the running back production, right. part of that came through a ton of receiving touchdowns. If there was a, you know, average draft position-wise, a ton of Chiefs are being drafted. Kelsey at 203, Damian Williams at 208, Mahomes at 308, Tyreek's right now at 406. That'll change depending on the suspension. Sammy Watkins at 603, Hyde at 901, Hardman at 1001. So is there a favorite value pick for you on the Chiefs? And maybe a dark horse pick in terms of fantasy production? If, if you're still getting Damian Williams for a 208, I'm I'm going to smash that in immediately. But we we just had a bet me against Jason. I don't I don't see him staying there as the the hype machine builds and builds and builds. He'll he'll be at worst the very beginning of of the second round. Yeah, and I I've said this before, but you know as Sammy Watkins stays and now drops in the sixth round, I I think he is a good option. Clearly, I, Mahomes can support a secondary wide receiver. We saw it in instance. How do you catch with those pads on your fingertips? He he gets the job done. Like, is it the claws, the extra claws? Sammy Watkins. <laughs> the lizard man. I think it might have been more uh, better for you not to have read the tweets. <laughs> yeah. Because then you might have just examined, you know, is now starting to distort things. I've been willing to not like Sammy Watkins, totally unrelated to his lizard uh, persona. Lizard-dom. Like, it's just Liz been based <laughs> – yeah, his lizard-dom. <laughs> Scary. Would you guys uh, even draft Carlos Hyde? I guess I'm surprised to see him in ninth round. What do you guys think about that? I, I'd love to talk about Hyde for a second because I think that he's a player that could go either direction due to camp and preseason. He should get a lot of time to run in the preseason. And if he flashes and looks good, I think he's going to be picked up regularly – in leagues, you know, would I draft him right now? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> it's, the signing of Carlos Hyde is so bizarre. It was so fast. Because, yeah, yeah I mean, they, they were like, we got to get some veterans in here. But guys that, that succeed, Andy, or Jason just mentioned that running backs that are fast have great hands, and when they're in open space, they make things happen. Carlos Hyde does not check in. <laughs> 
any of those boxes. He's he is literally one of the most e inefficient pass catching running backs since he has entered the league. So the, the signing is so strange to me. It, in the ninth round, I guess if you want to, if you just want to have that backup plan in case Damian Williams is the guy. But to me, if Damian Williams is not the guy, Carlos Hyde will get a chance, and then Carlos Hyde will not be the guy. Like they'll they'll go is there to, any chance that they'll Carlos, go back to Damian or or maybe Darwin Thompson. Is there any chance that Damian is a majority uh, work share back, but then you have a goal line situation it with could Carlos happen. Hyde? Yeah, even like right now, I would doubt it. And the reason I say I would doubt it is because of the way they use the running backs on the goal line in the passing game. You just brought up the the re receiving touchdowns from the running back position. They like to use them in that way, and that's not where Carlos Hyde excels. So I, I would be a little bit surprised. Yeah, the Damian Williams discussion in general has been a difficult one because you don't have this – you just have a strange career arc for him, and he's in such a great situation. Yeah, when so. is the last time that a 27-year-old running back has broken into fantasy stardom? It never? Like, has that it's, ever happened? Every once in a while. I'm sure it's happened. Yeah. yeah. And it, but it, not, it's not a regular thing. And why it would not surprise me if Carlos – if he maybe he has brought it on the goal line, even Kareem Hunt's rookie season, uh, it was really obnoxious to see how much Shark Hendrick West would get in there. That's at, absolutely at opportunity, but that didn't stop Kareem Hunt from being a top ten guy. So I'm not scared of that. Just saying, that there will be times that Carlos Hyde will will uh, will annoy you if you have Damian Williams. All right, uh, we do want to take a quick pause to remind you about the Ultimate Draft Kit at yeah. ultimatedraftkit.com. I mean, every single week we are adding to it. Uh, Jason, just this morning, got Mark Andrews tossed into those consistency charts, player updates. You got cheat sheets, player videos. We keep improving it, and the app is, is really going to get better and better. We're going to add some tools that help you utilize the app during your draft to keep track of players some of the things you've been requesting, we're listening. We're going to get it out there. And uh, this is something that can help set the foundation for your 2019 season in a really strong fashion. Yeah, what's what's great about the Ultimate Draft Kit is it's a it's a research tool. It's not just a point at the that player you should draft. There's there's tons and tons of information in here that you can actually form your own opinion because we 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 still want you to have your own opinion. And then if if you want a little bit more help, the tiered rankings breakdown, that's how we always handle all of all of our drafts. So check it out, ultimatedraftkit.com. All right, let's talk about the Chargers at 12-4. and four. The Chargers last year, I mean, it, it, this is a great team, a great offense led by a, a veteran uh, quarterback in Phillip Rivers, up-and-coming players at the wide receiver position. Keenan Allen has been consistent. He's been a, a target monster, Mike Williams exploded last year for double digit touchdowns. You have kind of the contract the contract standoff situation with Melvin Gordon, but Melvin Gordon has been an absolute beast. He's going with the sixth pick right now in fantasy drafts. Uh Keenan Allen's going in the third round. Is Keenan Allen a value in the third round? Uh you know, I mean I, I think that's where he belongs. I wouldn't call him a value because he's not one of these guys that go out that goes out and just completely dominates for a season in fantasy the last couple of years have been really weird where he's gotten off to a slower start had a better stretch and it really comes down to the touchdowns for him he's pretty consistent with the volume but the touchdowns seem to come in spurts it, third round is where you know I think he's going to return that value I don't think he's a bad pick there at all but I don't I'm not sitting there seeing his ADP being like man that's crazy he should be back in the first early second I bring it up only because last year he was 206, so the expectations on him have obviously decreased a little bit. I think it was – People were disappointed with Keenan last year because – End while, of season. Yes, but while he ended up pretty similar to his previous year, when he was in the second round last year, people were looking at what he did in that second half. Do you remember where he was yes. basically the number one wide receiver? And people thought that would continue last year from the get-go and he would just dominate – he didn't do that. So I think people are disappointed now. He's about where he should be. I would say the, the end of the season, I think, also skewed the way that people think of him. You had the, the game against the, the Chargers in Kansas City where he got hurt 
it essentially immediately posted a, a zero, so that crushed you. And then only he was basically yeah nothing for the last three games. Yeah, it, but before that, I mean, he was pacing over nine targets a game, just under seven receptions, eighty three yards, and half a touchdown a game. I mean, he was he was actually very very good. So a third round, I think, is is fair because he can still get a little bit hot and cold. In twenty seventeen, he was the number three overall fantasy wide receiver. What? Is that, I is that incorrect? I don't remember that. Maybe that was like over the second half. No, that's that's right, and that's that's why that second round. Exactly. Yeah. That's why the second round was there. Last year he finished at 12. Because he won people leagues. Yeah, it's the just, second half. It, it's a nice ceiling to have built into a player. I, that's why I wonder if he could be. Yeah, he could be. Could be you know, value. I've painted a lot of the Chargers offense on predictability, but the fact that, like, you know, okay, Tyrell Williams is leaving. That benefits Mike Williams. Not really thinking, you know, does that just create more dependency on Keenan Allen? For Philip Rivers, um, this was a an offensive line that ranked number thirteen in football last year. This is an offense that was tenth in passing yards per game. Um, in terms of you know you lost Tyrell Williams, he's gone. He uh, he was a deep threat. Antonio Gates, he was the the corpse of Gates was running around a little bit last year. He's gone, and so the Hunter Henry <laughs> story. The ball. Yeah, Hunter Henry is the guy that I think you know helps maintain this offense helps keep this offense in the upper echelon and keeps them competitive with the chiefs in this division. Uh, Keenan, or I'm sorry, uh, Hunter Henry expectations for you guys. I've got Hunter Henry as one of the top half tight ends this year in fantasy, uh, just behind Vance McDonald and OJ Howard. Those guys, I think Hunter Henry, 700 receiving yards. What do you think? Over under over under. I have Hunter Henry down for 718. So Ooh, way I will take the over clearly. Nice. But that's that's interesting. So you you have the Vance dance slightly above. I do. I, I I believe in in Vance McDonald. It, you know, you look at the targets vacated for both teams, and while it's good, like you're you're missing Antonio Gates, you're missing Tyrell Williams. There's it's just not comparable so then, to the amount of vacated targets for the Steelers. So you're probably passing on Hunter Henry then, so because you can get based on the Hunter a round or two later. Yeah. Or, the, uh, Vance. Yeah, I mean, I, I've said this before. When it comes to the the middle tier guys, pretty much Evan Ingram, OJ Howard. I'm willing to look at them, and after that, I'm actually you know just You're waiting, kind of okay. waiting forever. All right, uh, you guys know my love for Mike Williams. I have him ranked at wide receiver 17 on the season. Um, he is one of only five players targeted more than eight times inside the 10 zone in 2018. Uh, the others were Michael Thomas, Jam uh, James White. Mike uh, Mike Williams, obviously. Corey Davis and Doug Baldwin. Come on, Corey Davis. Seriously. Get it together, man. They keep trying. Ugh. Yeah. Um, so uh, other storylines here. What is Phillip Rivers for fantasy purposes? Is he a consistent middling option? That's I mean, exactly what he is. He He's is a, a, a nice 401K where yeah. – where it, maybe maybe you have enough to live off of, maybe you don't. I mean, he has been but he's so fine. Yeah, eighth in 2017. Last year, he was the 11th ranked quarterback. I mean, he's generally been in that top 12 category. It looks like eight of 10 years, but it's always near the back of it. So yeah, he can he's a, he's basically a, he can beat you on a certain week, but he doesn't generally end up with big numbers over the course of the year. Yeah, I mean, if you look at his season as a whole, he ends up as a quarterback one, but usually he spends the majority of his weeks outside of the top 12, but but not very far beyond that. I mean, last year you had uh, looks like six games where he was a top 10 quarterback, which is uh, – that's, that's okay, that's yeah. good. But that means that there's 10 games where he wasn't, and – he never finishes extremely low, right? He's he's never going to be the thirtieth quarterback in the week because he's a you know he's a vet. I mean, it, it, look week in week out, ranked fifteenth, ranked thirteenth, ranked fourteenth, ranked eighteenth. Just looking at his numbers for weeks last year, and it's like that's not going to help you win in a fantasy league, in my opinion. I would rather stream the position and get a guy. I'll I'll stream oh. Philip Rivers. I'll look at the matchups where he's got a great matchup and 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 throw him in there. He's his numbers are wild, man. When you, when you actually look at what he was doing last year until the those final three weeks, I know we'd, we're talking about he's outside of the top ten, but I mean it it took until week 
13 or game 13 that he was throw that he threw fewer than two touchdowns. So I mean, he was he very was very consistent. He was perfectly consistent and if, and just a nice floor. But are you happy with that? This like, team if it, uh, general fantasy question. No, I'm if, not happy with that. Are you happy with someone that consistently doesn't put up a goose egg but never gives you at the quarterback position the boom, the a week winning performance? No. I'm not not really wanting to draft that. I, I maybe I end up flexing into that week to week, but I want to talk I want to circle back to Melvin Gordon for a second cuz this team is predicated on they want to be a great defense. Um, they're in the top 10 you know in defensive rushing yards per game, uh, defensive passing yards per game. Melvin Gordon's a part of being that kind of a team. You get to grind it out with Melvin Gordon. If Gordon misses time, how are you shifting your like what are you doing as a fantasy owner with Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson? What is your kind of prescription right. for people with like I'm not that worried about Gordon, but at the same time, you still have to think about a, a plan for this offense and how much does it hurt without Gordon? I I think Justin Jackson stands to gain the most because Austin Eckler kind of has a role carved out and his will grow certainly without Melvin Gordon. But I it's not like Austin Eckler will just become the workhorse Melvin Gordon role. That's not what he's there for. And last year when Justin Jackson had that opportunity, he showed that he could do it. So I right. think what would actually happen if Melvin Gordon is traded or misses games is you're going to have Justin Jackson up first as the one in the one-two punch, and it'll pretty much be a committee backfield, but both will be, I think, startable assets because it's a quality offense. Sure. It, it, it's a tough call because – when Gordon went down last year, the, Eckler was the guy who got the first shot. Where he, and and that first one, he touched the ball eighteen times. It was a, it was a real stinker because he on those touches he produced about forty three yards. But then once again, he was fifteen carries, two receptions. So, I, I still have to lean that Eckler would be would give a or would be given the first shot. But it it will be a full time share with Justin. There are Jackson. some very big Eckler fans out there in the world. I'll tell you that. They believe yeah. he could be a lot more than the opportunity he's been given so far. Let's talk about the Denver Broncos. Hooray! Are we done? All right. Nah, there's plenty to talk about. No, look, I, I think that there are there are a number of topics. I want to talk about Emmanuel Sanders. I want to talk about Lindsey and Freeman. Last year, the Broncos were 6-10. and 10. Last year, the offense had trouble, and there were problems. Lindsey was the bright spot for fantasy owners. Because he was a superstar. Emmanuel Sanders was a very bright spot before the injury as yeah. well. Yep, but I mean, Case Keenum is gone. Joe Flacco, hello, welcome, welcome in. With his beard, have you seen him with the beard? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. man, it's that mile high air. You need to protect your 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 face, your neck, and your face. Um, There's a lot of neck beard going on. Have he almost? I connects. saw it. Yeah. Oh yeah. He. Did you see it, Jay? I haven't seen it, but I I know that he is a hairy picture dude. a wildebeest. Yes. Yeah. Um, Drew Locke was drafted in the third round. It's worth just bringing third that up. Third or second? Third round. It was? I believe oh. so. Huh? I, mean, I believe it was a third round pick. Okay. Uh, either way, I'm bringing him up because if things went south for the Broncos, it's a tough division. The Chargers and Chiefs are, and you know the Raiders have improved. I don't know how committed you stay to Joe Flacco if the team is two, Second round. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, you're six. right. That's on me. Yeah. You can blame Brooks. Brooks, yep. pack your things. You're fired. All of all the things you've ever done, <laughs> good, bad, getting Drew Locke's Look, round it's one not off. Just, it's not just getting it wrong; it's disparaging Mister Locke himself. Unbelievable! You yeah. will never be forgiven. Um, well, there you go. Brooks has been fired. Borland, <laughs> shift over one chair, please. Uh, having uh, said that, we have a job opening. <laughs> please send your resumes to Brooks. He's I'm not gonna... leaving. <laughs> okay. Well, right. You <laughs> we need to go squatter. through these resumes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We need somebody to hire. <laughs> um, but I don't, you know, this is a, a different team. I think that the, the Broncos, the Dolphins, there are a handful of teams where you look at them and you just, because we don't have something jumping out at us as fantasy owners, as the, uh, you know, a high end option, sometimes we can devalue the players on these teams and they, they're maybe not even the giants, right? Odell's gone. Eli Manning. Oh, nobody likes Eli Manning. But there are there's value to be had on these teams, and I think that that is going to come out here in Denver as well. If there's one thing that Joe Flacco tends to do is 
they are going to let him throw the ball down the field. Cortland Sutton is a big man. Emmanuel Sanders, I have I have raised yeah, where him are in we on my Emmanuel rankings. Sanders? I've got him ahead of Deshaun Hamilton okay. in fantasy production on the season because I'm trusting what my eyes are seeing about his recovery. I've watched interviews with him talk about his recovery. He's he's gone about as fast as you can go with an Achilles recovery, and this is not straight line videos you're watching. He's running routes. He is moving laterally, and he's a very, very good player. And I think a player that is coming back into the fold, I think he's just he's the best wide receiver they have. Like in a pure yes, skill true. position, he's better than those other two players. I don't have him ahead of Sutton because I think Sutton offers more touchdown upside than Emmanuel Sanders does. But kind of digging through the muck here, are you going to find somebody you're happy with at all with Joe Flacco throwing him the ball? Or or is this a bunch of wasted breath because we shouldn't even be talking about wide receivers in Denver? Uh, certainly someone could emerge. I mean, I remember the days where Joe Flacco threw it deep as well. Those those were neat. Look, the but Steve Smith years were awesome. Yes, but it's been a long time. And the question is, was that because of his weapons or is that because now he is much more of a dink and dunk passer? John Brown. I lean – that direction I lean that you know which means Deshaun or Emmanuel I'm not as bullish as you Andy on you know I've seen the same videos but you're you see those with everyone you know you see them running against air not in pads looking sharp looking great and I think that there's a another world to get to when it comes to being on the field in contact all of that and um, so I, I lean Deshaun for the short stuff but if you want to throw your your pick out for who has the best chance to to really emerge as a relevant, a very, very good fantasy option, I think it's got to be Cortland Sutton. Because if someone comes through, you want a, a red zone option. He's the big bodied guy. He looked great in spurts. He disappeared in spurts. But a lot of what's being said around Denver is that it looks like he's ready to step up into that number one role. He himself assumes he is going to be the number one option. And if that's the case, if he's stepping up to be, you know, the new Demarius Thomas, hopefully someday they get the new Peyton Manning. Yeah, I mean, I have a – my problem with Sutton is that I wanted him to do that. I mean, all these same refrains were there for the second half of the season. It was time for Sutton to step up and be the next Demarius Thomas. It's still his rookie uh, season. Sure, but uh, it was disappointing. Yeah. Is, was there anybody happy with – I mean, he was – No. People were swarming to pick up Cortland Sutton for his opportunity, and that was without Emmanuel Sanders. And so if this is going to be an offense predicated on running the ball and having a rejuvenated defense, I don't – I want him to succeed. I want him to be great. I don't know if the volume is going to be there for him. Yeah, that's fair. Do you have any interest at all in Noah Fant? You have first-round draft pedigree for a tight end. It still is rookie tight end. Mm, I don't. But – I mean, what we have seen before is Joe Flacco hyper-target his, his tight ends, and now he has a very athletically gifted one. I, I don't doubt that he will have four games this year where you're like, man, he should be picked up on the next week's waiver wire. I'm just worried about the weeks in between them. Okay. I, I, I stand there as well. I, I don't think this is a great offense as a whole. I'm not super waiting to get my piece of it, and when I get my piece, it's not going to be for the rookie tight end. I think that the the Denver Broncos will be surprisingly better this year. Well, I mean, look, Vegas is Vegas is with you when it comes to, you know, you brought them up in the same breath as the Dolphins, right, who are like 300 to 1 because we're not sure what's going on, but they put them kind of in the category of Tennessee and Carolina, uh, that that level of odds to win. I think they could be a 9 and 17 this year. Going up from 6 right. and 10. So it, just my but it, Philip Lindsay, Royce yes, Freeman. That's where I was going. Are go. you afraid to click the draft button? Are you afraid to take Philip Lindsay at his price point right now? We've talked so much about him. He said literally, I think it was yesterday, he will be a hundred percent. Yeah, he said he's going to be a hundred percent for the start of camp with the wrist. He he has said he feels a hundred percent, but it's also up to the trainers and not and a we'll leg see. injury though. I mean, we're right? Not, we're, similar things with David Johnson coming back, but right? Obviously, a, a significant injury. Would you rather draft Royce Freeman at his current average draft position of 804 or Philip Lindsay at what is now being shown at 408? He's dropped a lot. If I have to take one of them, I'll still take Lindsay there. Yeah, I, I, even though I now that Lindsay's to. fallen almost that to is, the fifth round, I, I would take Lindsay. Yeah, I would I would too. That's what, It's been Freeman all offseason, but when you talk about 408, I think I'm in now. 
I think I'm back in. Yeah, he started let's the move season that back what, up. like up, <laughs> up in the third, like high third. And Can so I? Let's move his ADP up. What show was it that we just talked about it, That Brooks? was the live show. No, I know, but show. which one was it? Like two weeks? I'm trying to figure out what's killing this ADP. That was Saturday's show, I believe. Was it? I think so. Oh, okay. Maybe, <laughs> Maybe it's the, not I me, I think that then. was San Fran live show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It All wasn't All right. Any other storylines from Denver? Are we moving on? Moving on. All right. It's hard knocks time. The Raiders, 4-12, wrapping up the AFC West. They'll start at home against Denver and Kansas City this year. John Gruden and company. And then I Minnesota mean, this is, and then the Colts. Yeah, that is right. That's not... That is not a good looking first four weeks. Denver, Kansas City, at Minnesota, at Indianapolis. Ooh. On paper, a rejuvenated, revamped, transformed team. At the high level, and I, you guys, we can get into all the players. At the highest level, what happened to this team to me, the biggest problem that this team has was, and and what made Derek Carr go from MVP candidate to uh, short-range um, you know, BB gun was the offensive line. This was a top-five unit that dropped way down, a simile – fell off a cliff and they couldn't keep Derek Carr on his feet. Carr got skittish. He started preferring the shorter intermediate routes to taking shots downfield because historically he's a good deep passer. But when you barely do it and you're skittish and afraid and not making clutch throws, that's what broke this team down. I don't know how you do better than getting a guy, Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams, and Josh Jacobs right. to fix that problem. I mean, they – you know, Marshawn's gone. You get the more versatile Jacobs in the backfield. Jordy Nelson's gone. You get the younger uh, Tyrell Williams as a deep threat. To me, it's all about the offensive line. Can the offensive line provide enough time for Carr to be an effective passer to bring up the fantasy value of everyone around? What do you guys think? Uh, look, I think Antonio Brown being there is going to help the offensive line in a sense. The, the fact that Carr will have someone to go to. Carr is a super late-round guy that – you know how there's those guys where Don't it's like, do no, 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 I'm, no, I, 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 look, mm -mm. there are, there are those guys you're fine being wrong about where it's like, you know, look, if he's great, I, this is one where I'm not, I don't think Carr has a great year, but I'm not, I am not super confident in that at all. It, he's got the weapons both at running back and at wide receiver to put up enough, you know, enough fantasy points. He's got to play Kansas city a couple times, other great offenses. I, I think Derek Carr could be a surprise late round guy that ends up as a successful fantasy option this year. They also added Ryan Grant to the offense, who was like a free agent pickup last offseason by From Baltimore, wink, wink, to the Colts. And then Marcel Aitman flashed last year. J.J. Nelson was an addition. Uh, they still have Jalen Richard in the backfield. I think the offense is probably underrated, Mike. I really do. Okay. I, like, like you said, everything looks great on paper. Looks great on paper, but I don't. I just I don't believe in Derek Carr as as a quarterback. I don't think he's that good. Okay, so what does that translate? Then carry that belief fantasy into value? into Antonio Brown. Not 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 to Carr. Carr's not being drafted in a position where sure. you have to justify his failing or succeeding. Brown is. I mean, Brown is being punished in a lot of rankings because of the transition from Big Ben to the Raiders. Even though he is the guy, right. even though he is the best receiver in football from a skill standpoint yeah and, and I won't I won't argue with those points but we've we've seen great wide receivers many many a times have bad quarterback play behind them and it's Carr is not the worst but I, I just don't think it, he can help out Antonio Brown anywhere close to the level that that you're hoping for now his draft price what's interesting about him so I'm looking at fantasy football calculator right now I mean, he's sandwiched literally right between Juju and Mike Evans. And would you, would you rather have Antonio Brown for, uh, with Derek Carr as a quarterback, or do you want Mike Evans with Jameis Winston? So I've gone back and forth on these two guys specifically. And and, and then right after that is T.Y. Hilton. Right, and, and I do land on the Antonio Brown side. Okay. I, I think that while – Antonio Brown is not going to be the number one wide receiver anymore. I've still got him with an astronomical target volume. What won't be there the way it was in Pittsburgh is the touchdown numbers. I mean, Antonio Brown has always been a double-digit touchdown guy. Last year, what do you have, 15 touchdowns? I mean, 
that's not going to happen. So I think the ceiling might be off a little bit. But I, I mean, the difference between Carr and Jameis Winston in real life is not that much. You, you forget Carr two years ago, he was a top ten fantasy quarterback, which is crazy to think about when he had the weapons there. So I think Antonio Brown. I'm certainly not taking him over Juju, but I would take him over Mike Evans. Okay. Josh Jacobs, how many passes does he catch this year? What's his fantasy ceiling? How are you looking at Jacobs? Isaiah Crowell went out, got hurt. They had picked him up. Instead, they have to replace him with Krampus. <laughs> Doug Martin is back again. Ah, uh, yes. But this is Josh Jacobs' backfield. Yeah. He should have every opportunity to contribute in both facets, which means that, you know, this is not – even if you don't believe in the offense, even if you don't believe in the defense, the game script, if you think is negative, if you're a pass-catching running back like Jacobs is, you should be pretty consistent and pretty you relevant. Should. I mean, look at – Lindsey would be a very – Lindsey's a very interesting comp here because the Broncos were 6-10 and 10 last year, and Lindsey's not somebody that you would look at as a prototypical – like, you know, he's not going to carry it 250 times. We've never seen Jacobs take a workload at Alabama – so, but the, let's say they go six and ten. Maybe they're not a good team. Philip Lindsay still had a great year, right? Uh, I right now I have Josh Jacobs catching about forty passes, which is is that's that's not a good number, but it's you it would be perfectly acceptable. The problem with for Jacobs is just the you're buying into the idea that he was a first round running back has a pass catching skill set. Because they have Jalen Richard. He, he's still on the team. And last year, when things, when the game script flipped upside down, it was Jalen Richard just getting absolutely peppered with targets. So do they do they take that jump and they say, okay, we're just going to play Josh Jacobs on all three downs? Or does he just get worked into some passing plays on first and second down and then Richard is, is a bigger thorn than you're expecting. I think the fact that they used Jalen Richard so much last year and then turned around and said, yeah, we're going to spend a first rounder on a running back and we're going to go get a Isaiah Correll says what they want. And what they want is not Jalen Richard. Well, yeah, they, they don't want him to be the, the grinder, but last year, 81 targets, 68 receptions for Jalen Richard. Which, yeah, those, those are real receptions for a running back. Right, for sure. But that, that also says Derek Carr is looking to that position. The offense can utilize it. But I don't think it's going to be Richard. I think it's going to be Josh Jacobs. He was he worried me before the draft because I thought he was going to be drafted as a committee guy. But the combination of him being given a first-round draft capital and then having Isaiah Crowell go out to a season-ending injury says he's got he's got the shot of being a true three-down back. They'll mix in Richard. They'll mix in Krampus. But he's going to he's going to take the lead uh, of of this offense from the backfield for sure. The first round draft capital nearly assures heavy involvement, but you're, I, you yes, know, yes, it should. They couldn't really throw the ball and anywhere other than to Richard last year, so it'll be interesting to see. That is your AFC West. Um, I want to get into the mailbag a little bit. This show, if you've been listening to it either a short while or a long while, it's all about you, your league, you, the fantasy player. We're trying to get you as much information as possible to make you uh, a better fantasy player year to year, but also enjoy your league more. Enjoy uh, running a league if you're a commissioner. And so we like to get in and answer as many questions as we can here and over at Join the Foot. Um, let's jump into the mailbag. 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 All right, you'll like this one, Jason. Keith in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We are getting rid of kickers and replacing them with an extra flex position. Congratulations, yeah. Keith. What do you guys think the ideal bench size should be in order to keep some talent on the waiver wire and to deal with bye weeks? So if you have a league where you have an extra flex spot, I guess he's wondering how big should the bench be to uh, properly sure. populate the waiver wire. So he says he currently has a six bench, and they do have the IR spot as well, so I would just keep it at six. Yeah, personally. I'm 100% I'm fine going to five bench, an IR. I think five bench and an IR is great. Six is also fine. I would I would really – it's a matter of your league, right? Because I think that the more into it your league is, the, the if you've got 11 other owners that really take this serious, it's one of those home leagues that, you know, has been going for six, seven, eight years, everyone's competitive, then a six bench is great. But if it's where, like, you've got a handful of people that 
aren't as into it, then you know it, those 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 more shallow waivers, uh, you know, it's, it's hard for the the casual people. All right, uh, question from Derek in Orange County, California. Do you each have a position you are consistently better at projecting? Mm. I.e., wanting to know whether like Jason's better at running backs or Mike at wide receiver, etc. I, I think within ourselves, we do not necessarily like I'm better at a position than others. But I know when it comes to like rookie scouting, I am better at scouting running backs than quarterbacks, for example. I, I, I trust Andy's scouting on quarterbacks better than my scouting on quarterbacks. And I trust my scouting on running backs better than everyone's. <laughs> There's a ton of factors. Like in season last year, I just happened to be more accurate when it came to running backs and wideouts than I did quarterbacks and tight ends. So that's a little different than draft scouting, obviously. Um, but from week to week, I, it seemed to favor those positions. Um, do you remember what you you were most accurate on, Mike? Uh, off the top of my head, I think looks uh, like you were the quarterback whisperer. Yeah, the, you and, were, uh, and running backs, you did pretty well too. I know over the running years, running backs usually where I feel strongest. Over the years, though, it, it does tend to change. I don't think it's a universal truth. Yeah. To answer the question. All right, this question comes in from now. Watch out, hang on. Comes from the Texas Hitman in Houston. Oh, oh wait, ho, ho, ho. is that you, Leatherface? <laughs> uh oh. You know him. Thank you for listening to the show. Well, the yeah. Texas Hitman, Leatherface. Yeah, you, yeah. you guys don't know. Oh, I know get your reference. All right, oh all yeah, right. it's scary. I, it's a massacre. <laughs> I just didn't know if you'd permit more than one, Mike. Uh, uh, there's there's plenty of room. There was there was many more before me, and there will be many more after there's me. There's video games. Yeah, there's all sorts of hitmen out there. Would you really feel comfortable with Mixon as your running back? One is the question in a half point per reception league. My rankings and my brain say yes. I would. Yes, I'm okay with it. I'm not like thrilled. I would much rather take James Conner, but I would take. You okay. you would much rather yes. take James Conner than yes. Joe Mixon. Yes, I am. Sorry, not there. that's official commentary. The, no, that's fine. You guys can keep down James Conner all you want. You're wrong. I I I don't have any problem against James Conner, but I would not say I would definitely rather have James Conner than Joe Mixon. I would say that. Oh, but go oh, oh. go. Water bed. Not that that was that was just formalizing a, a an open secret here. Yes, you know that I, in in public uh, forums we have disagreed on James Conner. Um, You're going to be very sad. Okay. Of James Conner's success, you it, it would be best for you to do your victory lap now while nothing has happened. As opposed to later when uh, you're I will wrong. say we do have some fantasy source friends who have may or may not have talked to Mike Tomlin. Okay, and Mike mm. Tomlin said that you know he can see the future and knows exactly uh, how James Conner's production is going to be. When other players were named on that team, he said no, James Conner. Okay, we'll see what happens uh, in this since offense. Since this is a informative podcast, yes. What other players were being named? Running backs. Uh, can you name them? Is this Jalen uh, Samuel? Yes. Okay. So I don't think that there's been contentions made on this show by me that James Conner's not their starting running back. That's not the pre that's not the pretense by which I argue against James Conner. If you listen to the live show, I argue, I argued against James Conner on the basis that he fell off a cliff halfway through the year and he's more of a RB2 than an RB1. That's mm -hmm. my only contention. Not that he sucks. If you remember what I said is I said, "Hey, he's more in the RB12 to 15 range. He's not the RB6 you got at the beginning of the year." So, I don't have any doubt he is the starter. I do have concerns about the offense absent Antonio Brown. Um, I assume you are not anti-Joe Mixon. You're just pro-James Conner. Yes. All right, one last question. Henry in Cincinnati, Ohio. Two quick questions. Oh, you know, I say one last question, and then oh. Henry, Henry sneaks in a second one. Nope, you only get one, but Henry. he says it's quick. All right. How I'll do you convince it. your league to use Sleeper instead of Yahoo, and do you think Ertz is being drafted at his, at his ceiling? Yes, he's being drafted at his ceiling to me. And Sleeper, is the, it's an easy-to-use app. They're very customizable, and they're always listening, trying to make the platform better and better. And certainly if, if it happens to be a dynasty or keeper league, something like that, the platform runs in the offseason. You can trade picks and things like that that you can't do on some of these other platforms. Pristine deal of the day. All right, as we wrap it up, 
pristine deal of the day. DeAndre Hopkins signed Texans jersey yesterday. Went for 55. 54. 55.54. Yes. So close to the perfect amount of money. Uh, <laughs> Whoever won that should be disappointed that they didn't just pony up one cent. It's a huge to mistake. To make it awesome. Yeah. That's a, shame. a tip. You should have tipped them. Shame on you. Yeah. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS when you sign up. And uh, that'll do it for today's episode of the show, unless you two gentlemen have anything else you want to add. I would just add, if you are a winner and you're looking to get some fantasy football hardware in your life, please check out FantasyChamps.com. The absolute best in the business. Use that promo code BALLERS. You're going to save a little bit of money. All right, that is it. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Thanks for supporting the show. We'll be back very soon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.